Mother Knows Best by Recognition L7107 My son won't talk to me. It's been three days since my son stopped talking to me. He won't eat on his own. He won't bathe. I'm worried about him. My son has always been different, but he's never acted like this before. When he was born, he weighed only three pounds and the doctors said he had complications. They said I shouldn't be surprised if he didn't survive. I prayed and prayed for him to make it through, prayed that God wouldn't take my baby away from me like he allowed my husband to leave. God answered my prayers and my son lived. He is special, a gift from the High Father, and after that, I vowed I would never betray his blessings, because Johan is all I have. He is everything to me. I will admit, I'm a protective mother. I wanted Johan to grow into a fine young man, to be strong as the holy text wished upon the followers of the High Father, and I had to pay close attention to him to make sure he reached his full potential. When he was little, Johan had a very particular diet, and I was the only one capable of putting it together. I made sure to always mix his medication with his meals, because he never liked swallowing pills. He was an energetic boy, and he wanted to play ball like all the other children in the neighborhood, but he was just too frail, too weak to play those games. I often caught him sneaking out the door to play, and sometimes I'd find him roughhousing with the neighborhood kids. I never understood what he was thinking. He wasn't in any condition to do that, and I constantly worried about his health. One day, while he was at school, I received a call from his teacher. Johan had gotten injured on the monkey bars and broke his arm. I had instructed the teachers to never allow Johan to participate in those activities, but of course they didn't listen. I immediately withdrew Johan from public school. I began homeschooling Johan when he was 13. I taught him every subject he needed to know. Most importantly, I taught him about our Lord, the High Father. He attended every Saturday Mass, every Tuesday study, and he was always excited to learn. I watched over him closely, and he grew into the young man I had dreamed of. For a long time, everything was perfect. Then his 21st birthday came. That evening, I was preparing his birthday dinner. We were going to give thanks to the Lord with a goat head roast and chicken heart stew. Johan's favourites. He came into the kitchen, fidgeting with his long, slender fingers, and he spoke to me in his smooth, mature voice. Mother, do you have a moment? I closed the oven door and turned around. He was sweating profusely, his shirt stained with wet marks, and his eyes darted left, right, then settled on my face. Why did he look so sickly and haggard? His marble-coloured skin flushed red around his ears and cheeks, and he kept brushing strands of hair away from his forehead. What's wrong? Why are you acting so strange? I said. He shrank away like I'd accused him of murder. It broke my heart to see him like this on a special day, so I masked my frustration and put on a soft smile. Finally, he spoke up again. I have a special request for you, mother. I'm hoping you'd consider it, but only if it's in your favour. I, I want to go to the local library, he said, avoiding eye contact. His forehead glistened under the fluorescent lights, dripping sweat. Poor Johan. He was a young man in a big world, yet he didn't seem to understand its dangers. 
What could he possibly learn at the library that he couldn't learn at home? But there was something else that left a bad taste in my mouth. This was the first time he had ever asked me for something. In his 21 years of life, Johan had never made a request of me. To use such a rare instance for something so blasphemous, I should have told him no right then. If I had, perhaps he wouldn't be so broken now. I looked into his watering eyes and that face. God, I never want to see him so full of despair ever again. I told him, okay, and he threw himself at me, hugging me so tightly with his thin arms that I swore he could have crushed me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He nuzzled his head into my neck and I stroked his hair. I will drop you off and pick you up every time you wish to go, I said. Just behave yourself when you're there. I worry about you, Johan. For a month, I dropped him off at the library a few hours at a time. Then, Johan was the happiest I'd ever seen him. He had colour in his cheeks and I'd often find him grinning for seemingly no reason. But one night, after picking Johan up from the library, I found myself pondering his visits. He was so happy that he hardly registered my questions. He looked lost in thought, as if drifting through a daydream. But I did nothing. I let his behaviour continue because I couldn't bear to see him unhappy again. He began neglecting his studies, sleeping during Saturday Mass, and even choosing the library over Tuesday study. Was he even my baby boy anymore? I didn't know, but I needed to find out why he had changed. One day, after dropping Johan off at the library, I decided to call out sick from work and follow him. I waited until he was gone, then went inside. The wretched place disgusted me the moment I walked in. The Lord says that the knowledge of us earth dwellers is tainted. How could I have let my only child delve into such horrors? I found Johann sitting at a table with a book in his hands. Something about aviation. Another blasphemy. Trying to reach the heavens without his Lord's blessings. My baby boy was completely absorbed by the book. My sweet Johan. A woman who looked much older than him, approached with a sly grin on her face. Her hands swept along his shoulders, and then Johan began talking to her. The two chatted for what seemed like an eternity, and I was revolted. How could Johan be so happy with another woman? Who even was she? I snuck closer to hear their conversation. I still remember the vile words she shared with my naive son. Have you tried asking your mother to help apply for your FAFSA form? She asked him. You wanted to apply for St. John's Community College, right? Johan looked at her with a heavy frown, a tinge of disgust on his lips. I don't know, Miss Dolosky. My mum, she... I don't think she will like that. I hated seeing him that way, yet warmth spread through my chest. Good boy, Johan. You know what's right. The woman sighed at my son's smart words and spoke with a sinner's tongue. I curse her to this day for what she dared to say to Johan. Your mother is delusional, Johan. From the things you've told me, I think it's best if you just got away from her. You're 21 years old, for God's sake. You need to live your life. I couldn't stand to hear any more of her defamation. I emerged from the corner of the bookshelves and pointed my finger at her. How dare you speak to my son like that? I know what's good for him, not you. This isn't what the Lord wants for his life. I knew we should never have come here. They both stared at me with wide eyes, and I grabbed Johan's wrist. He looked at me with that same defeated expression, but it wasn't enough this time. I took him home and forbade him from ever setting foot in that hellhole again. 
From then on, Johann has been lost from the light of the High Father. He shut himself away in his room and only emerged from meals and to bathe. But he will be saved. He will come to realize what he has done wrong and how evil the world is. And in order to cleanse my son, I needed to make sure the woman stayed away from him. When night fell, I visited the library. I found her closing the doors and saying goodbye to the staff members. I waited in the parking lot, then stopped her on the way to the car. You, I said, pointing at her again. The High Father will punish you for what you did to my boy. For the evil you spoke. You can't corrupt my son. Don't you see? He's supposed to be with his mother, and he will stay with me. Forever. I know what's best. Me, not you. She scoffed and crossed her arms. Right, lady. I'm sorry you got dragged into whatever crazy cult this is. But don't you see? You're killing your son. I'm just trying to help him. Save him. From who? Me? I balled my hands into fists and spit flew from my mouth. You're the sinner. You and everyone else out there. I saved him from those teachers when he was a child. I'm protecting him. You people have no idea how to take care of a gift from the High Father. No one will take him from me. Not you or all those child services, whatever they're called. He is mine. Even his father didn't want him. The Lord gave him to me. A day or so later, a local news station covered a murder case. Someone left that horrible woman to die in the library's parking lot after stabbing her over 40 times. Good riddance to that disgusting wench. But when Johann saw the story, despair set into his face again. I asked him what was wrong, but he said nothing. He simply looked at me, drilling his sorrow deep into my soul. That, that look, it made me think of his father. A look as if everything about me was wrong, as if I was a monster. I am not a monster, Johan. I am your mother. But he didn't want to listen to a word I had to say. And then he accused me of something terrible. He accused me of killing that woman. Ridiculous. It was not my fault that God decided to kill her. He gave me a mission to protect my son. And I did just that. It was not murder. It was a baptism. Johan ran from me. He tried to run into his room, but I was not going to take any more of his disrespect. I grabbed him on the staircase and he fell backwards. I didn't mean to hurt him. I just wanted to talk to him. I would never hurt my baby boy. But he won't listen to me anymore. He stares ahead blankly every time I try to talk to him. He doesn't bathe himself. He doesn't eat. He dares not speak to me, as if I had done something terrible to him. My baby boy has completely shut me out, and now he carries this odour, like his father did after a big fight we had. Please, I don't want to lose my baby boy. I'm only trying to do what's best for him. I am his mother, and a mother always knows what's best. I just want to thank Recognition L7107 for allowing me to narrate this story. If you liked what you heard here, head over to their Reddit page and show them some love. I'll leave a link for the story in the description below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, stay tuned for one more nightmare.